When preparing images for your website, you need to consider more than aesthetics. You need to optimize your images for the web. First, you need to choose a web-compatible format. GIF is one of the oldest formats and it's supported by all browsers. Many people pronounce it GIF. However you pronounce it doesn't really matter, but the file name extension is always .gif. JPEG has also been around for a long time and is universally supported. The file name extension is usually .jpg, but .jpg is sometimes used. And ping is a more recent format. Apart from some problems with Internet Explorer 6, it's fully supported by all browsers in widespread use. SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, is also a well-established format, but is less well supported than the previous three. The new kid on the block is WebP, or WebPy as it's normally pronounced. Let's look at all five formats in more detail to help you decide which to use. GIF was the dominant format in the early days of the web. Let's look at its good points. It uses lossless compression. Image quality doesn't degrade when the file is compressed. It creates much smaller files than most other image formats. It supports simple animation. It also supports index transparency, which means that you can make one color, usually the background, transparent. A big drawback of GIF is that an image can consist of a maximum of 256 colors. It's best suited to large blocks of solid color. Another problem is that index transparency can result in artifacts known as jaggies. The star on the right looks fine against a white background, but look what happens when it's placed against a dark background. There's a white halo around the image. You can avoid this by exporting the image with the same background color as the web page, but this works only with plain flat backgrounds. GIF's limited range of colors leads to posterization or banding. The sky in the image on the right looks unnaturally striped, so GIF is unsuited to photographs or images that require smooth color transitions. That's a role much better suited to JPEG which supports millions of colors. Saving the same photo as a JPEG results in continuous tones. Graphics programs let you select a quality setting for JPEG files. This helps reduce file sizes. The downside is that JPEG uses lossy compression, which discards data. In most images, a large amount of data can be discarded before the result is sufficiently degraded to notice. However, resaving JPEG images results in increasing levels of degradation. If possible, you should always work with a high quality original and save the optimized version as a copy. Another drawback of JPEG is that it doesn't support transparency. Nevertheless, it's an excellent choice for photographs. Ping tries to offer the best of both worlds. There are three different Ping formats, Ping 8, Ping 24 and Ping 32. Ping 8 supports the same 256 colors as GIF, but Ping 24 and Ping 32 support millions of colors. All three Ping formats support alpha transparency, which not only avoids the jaggies typical of GIF images, but also allows you to create semi-transparent objects. The teal background blends with the yellow circle where they overlap. Ping uses lossless compression, so there's no degradation when the file is resaved. The downside is that Ping results in much larger files than JPEG, so Ping isn't a good choice for photographs. However, it's extremely useful if you need alpha transparency. Don't confuse Ping images with the format Adobe Fireworks uses to save files. They're both based on the Portable Network Graphics Standard, but a Fireworks Ping file contains editable layers. If you're using Fireworks as your graphics program, use the export command on the file menu to create a flattened Ping file for display in a web page. Fireworks CS6 
now uses .fw.png for its editable files to make the distinction clearer. SVG differs from the other formats in that it's a text-based graphics language that describes images with vector shapes, text and embedded graphics. It has many positive points. SVG files produce high-resolution images that are scalable, so the same file produces equally sharp quality on a mobile phone or when blown up on a desktop display. The images can also be animated, for example to show working models of machinery. And because shapes, gradients, fill colours and filter effects are all text-based, SVG results in much smaller file sizes than the same image in any other format. The main drawback is that Internet Explorer 8 and Android 2 don't support SVG, which makes it impractical to use at the moment, but SVG will become increasingly important. So what about WEPI, the new format developed by Google? It has a lot going for it. It supports both lossy and lossless compression, making it very versatile. It also supports alpha transparency. But the real advantage of WEPI is that it produces high quality images in much smaller files than JPEG or PNG. What stops it from being widely adopted is that it's currently supported only in Chrome, Opera and Android 4. But like SVG, this format will become increasingly important. As a designer, you're likely to handle many more types of image formats, but the following are not supported by browsers. TIFF, BMP bitmaps, EPS illustrations and PDF documents. Browsers open PDFs if Adobe Reader is installed, but you can't embed a PDF image in a web page. When preparing images for the web, size does matter. Always optimize your images in a graphics program to get the best balance between file size and image quality. Make sure the image dimensions are no larger than they need to be. Although you can use HTML and CSS to shrink images, don't do so unnecessarily. Large images consume bandwidth, which means slow downloads and increased costs. So, to summarise, until SVG and WEPI are more widely supported, stick to GIF, JPEG and PNG. JPEG is best for photographs. Use PNG for transparency. And always optimise your images to achieve the best balance between quality and file size.